Hello Internet! As if you haven't read the title of this video, I went to PAX over the weekend. For those of you who don't know, PAX, or Penny Arcade Expo, is a video game expo created by the creators of Penny Arcade, the webcomic series, which exploded in popularity, and the community eventually evolved to the point where they were able to create this expo. There's PAX South, which is in San Antonio, that's the one I went to, PAX West, which is in Los Angeles, and PAX East, which is in Boston. The reason I went to San Antonio rather than Boston, which is closer to me, is because Video Games Awesome Live was going to be there. Video Games Awesome Live is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. They play video games live. The way that it's set up is that they sit on a couch in front of a green screen. Uh, the video game is shown here, and then down below is a scrolling chat. Uh, that chat's only for the paid uh, fan club uh, called The Turbos, uh, of which I am a member. I have loved that show for years, and I have always wanted to meet the hosts of that show, Frazier, Agar, and Becky Blow. They are the coolest people, and I've always wanted to meet them, and guess what? Over the weekend, I did. Recorded a bunch of stuff as we went, uh, so why don't I just go ahead and get into that, and then as we go, I'll talk a bit more about it. So, here it is, my PAX adventure. Here it is, it's just about 7.30, and I'm just about to get, to get underway. So, pack south, here we come. Really? Yes. I like just really, really. Hi, everybody. We're at the airport. We are uh, waiting for our flight. We're going to get on about an hour. We're going to head down. Uh, we've got a layover, a stupid hour layover, and then we'll get back on the airplane and uh, head down to... Um, uh, it's still really dark. Okay, there we go. Uh, and then we'll head down to San Antonio. Uh, so we'll be we'll get there around about uh, 8 p.m. tonight. And uh, yeah, we're really excited. By the way, I should have said. Really <laughs> by the way, I should have said this is my friend Matt. You probably heard his voice uh, during our uh, Hellblade uh, Let's Play, which we really do need to get back to at some point. So I was muffled. But yeah, it was there. It was there. Yeah. Well, yeah, because the audio issues, which is why we're going to have to read. So I'm really sorry, Matt, but there's a huge section of the game we're going to have to replay because the audio is so bad. Whatever. Yeah, alright, so... <laughs> okay, so I guess that's it. Norm normally he's a lot more talkative and interesting, now he's just being a boomer. You're right. boring. Actually, you're is Hellblade playing right now? No, it is not. Well, Hellblade is not playing. You were interesting on the drive here. You were driving. You were funny on the drive here. Yes. We should, record we should have recorded that. Yes. Why didn't we record it? Sure. All right, we'll, we'll be funny later. Okay, <laughs> bye. Are you recording that? Really? Thanks. I'm, well, record I'm recording now, yeah. Comments about poop. Thanks, thank you, Dan. There might be poop on the seat. <laughs> but you can show the audience. See, look. May or may not there may, be. That may or may not be. It could be chocolate. We, let's go with chocolate. Or coffee. So how long have we got to wait, you said? Uh, half an hour. Oh, jeez. Oh, well. A lot of sitting. That's what's so scary about it. Sitting? All the sit, yeah. Like, oh my god. I'm so, I'm afraid. Sitting. I'm afraid to sit down. Like a die sitting. Oh my god. We're sitting right now. It never ends. <laughs> you ever get caught in a thought loop where you think about what you're thinking about, which is thinking about what you're thinking about? No. Really? Nope. Really? Because I've done, I've done that a lot. Uh, I, I, I just, I just get, much. I just get. Oh uh, yeah, it's hollow. Empty, empty. <laughs> I was thinking about that yesterday, and it was like, I couldn't stop thinking about it, because it just kept going over and over in my head. Yeah, I saw you first. Oh, you did? Okay, yeah. You never comment on it. I never comment on anything. On anyone's then, anything. On then what is the point of you being on Facebook? So that I can message people infrequently. Very infrequently. And, then just and you always text me on your phone anyway. Just spy on them. You use your phone to text me. You don't use Facebook to text me. Yeah, but I don't, I don't have everybody in. I don't know anyone, so I remember off the top of my head. Yeah. I have yeah, to look at my phone. Work, phone if my phone was dead, I would not be able to contact literally anyone. I'm sure that's, that's a problem everybody yeah. has come up with. The, the phones are all yeah. Rolodexes for everybody to have. Exactly, yeah. And no one knows what Rolodex is. Not anymore. 
yeah, you kids don't know. You don't know the joys of, of owning a Rolodex. <laughs> yeah, because that's a joy. I never actually owned it. I never owned a Rolodex. You never had a churn your own butter, children? Never. <laughs> when I was a boy, I spent hours not churning butter. <laughs> No, okay, so I had the idea of um, the single serving bowl of, of mac and cheese that you microwave. And so I was like, well, they really missed out on the opportunity to call it snack and cheese. And so we, we came up with the idea of DB's snack and cheese, and it's like this old timey thing. Harken back to the days of microwaving your, your mac and cheese by the light of a fire. When I was a boy, microwaves were the size of a house and had to be brought in by horse cart. Of course, the chef got caught inside, usually, and he would slowly bake. Poor D.B. <laughs> they say there's a little bit of him in every bowl. Poor D.B. He was delicious. That was very, um, pharmacistentially speaking. <laughs> we were coming up with fake words on the drive up, and, uh, Something about surplus. Oh, uh, surpa surpa um, Serpentulously. Serpentulous. Serpentulous. Yes. Serpentulous. If the situation uh, is as useless as a snake in a snowstorm, serpentulous. Um, and uh, pharmacistically was. Uh, pharmacistically was. Um, yeah. You have, you have to have the word stench in it because it's fun here. Um, pharmacistically, what did that mean? It was something about pharmaceuticals. And then the other one was. Wononically, if you do something humorous, but in the way that Winona Ryder would do it. <laughs> we'll come up with more. We'll we will have, we're waiting. Because we're going to have two hour, a two-hour flight uh, to our first layover, and then an hour there, and then another two hours. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome and we're gonna to the morning. To get going. You're not going to like that. All right, this is, you know, well, obviously not. All right, this is us, um, and we can barely put our faces into this at the same time because these seats are crammed. And I'm fat. That too. And I mean, I'm, I'm pushing the phone against the seat in front of me. Ladies and gentlemen, this, once everybody this is how much space there is between the us and, and the back. seat. There's no fart in front of me. For those who are this like is, I, I do not like flying. You've never flown before. You can't say that you hate it because you've never done it before. I've done it and I hate it because I know. Nothing over here. They make it seem like there's like. Ladies and gentlemen, the boarding door is now closed. Push the way out. Watch out, computers. Mouth and handle electronic devices. Maybe use an airplane mode. So uh, I forgot to update uh, last night when we got in, but we're in. We're in San Antonio. Uh, made it safe and sound, even though the last leg of the flight was absolutely terrifying because we had to fly through a storm. And uh, Matt said that he saw lightning through the window. And I didn't look. I was white knuckled, holding onto the armrests, uh, eyes closed, just waiting for, for the turbulence to end or for it all to end. <laughs> uh, so, anyway, so we're here. Here's. My brother Clint, and there's Matt, and we're about to head out, and so we're going to get to PAX and hopefully get to meet Video Games Awesome Live. So. There's a stain in the bathroom. <gasps> there's a stain! Is it a shit stain? It might be. It's near the toilet paper. No. <laughs> it, it followed us. It came with us. It's alive. <laughs> it's alive. Anyway. All right, I'll update as we go. updated letting us know that he's going to be at a restaurant near here so we're heading there now so this may be it we may finally actually meet them so yay
Okay, so I didn't record this part, uh, in part because I felt it might be rude, uh, but also because I was so starstruck that it, it just didn't occur to me to do it. But, uh, so what happened was we got to Shiloh's and it was absolutely packed. And so we had to wait, and while we were waiting, we kind of scanned the uh, restaurant looking for them. We didn't see them. After about a 10-minute wait, we were taken to our table, and as we were walking to our booth, we passed by theirs. And it was kind of a really exciting but very nerve-wracking moment where I just sort of like, was like, don't look, keep walking, don't, not yet, it's not, it's not right, it's not the right time. So then we sat down, and I made sure that I was facing their booth, and uh, just sort of, like, we were three booths over. And just sort of, like, silently stalked them for a little bit. Uh, and I was so nervous, and I was like, uh, should I go up to them? Should I talk to them? No, because they're eating breakfast, and I think that would be rude to interrupt them. So we just ordered food, and we waited, and eventually they left. And... And I walked up to them, and I said, hey, sorry, uh, I am i don't mean to approach you like this. And I totally expected them to tell me, hey, that's great and all, but not right now. But they didn't. They were super excited to meet me. They were the happiest, friendliest people. And, they, I mean, they hugged me, you know. They were like, hey, you know, you're, are, are you a turbo? Yes, I'm a turbo. Oh, my gosh, that's great. You know, uh, welcome. This is your first pack. Yes, it is. And they were just so so interested in me. They were interested in talking to me and, and, and happy to meet me. And it was perhaps the absolute best way that I could possibly have met them. This is, it, it, it blew my expectations away. And I was just so thrilled. Frazier was like, well, uh, us and the Turbos, we're going to meet up at this, at this tree near this tower at four o'clock. So we'll see you there. And they, uh, they left, and I went back to breakfast, and then when we were done, we headed back to the convention floor, and we looked around, uh, we tried out a few stuff. Uh, as a matter of fact, I tried out some VR, and I'll throw that video in right about here. That VR experience was absolutely amazing. It was very realistic, very strange feeling, especially when video game characters would like come up to me and like really look at me. I, I played as a robot and they were inspecting me and making sure that I functioned correctly. And then I was put into this sort of battlefield thing. And it was this great concept where you can actually like uh, jump your, your robot consciousness from one robot to the next. So you're taking over enemy robots and turning around and just like blasting uh, enemies away. That lasted about 15 minutes, and then the uh, the woman running the demonstration, uh, she startled me because she tapped me on the shoulder, and she was like, you know, okay, experience over. And so taking off the headset, taking off the VR, coming back to the real world was such a, a, a strange, jarring experience. I actually felt pretty disoriented for a while afterward. Not nauseous or anything, but just weird like like the real world wasn't that real anymore it was very strange and i uh, just for trying it out i got a free t-shirt and it says on the back high voltage software those are the makers of the game and i thought it was really cool uh it was on the oculus rift and i'm sorry but i think that's an inferior piece of technology to say the htc vive which i really really want um it was blurry and and that was distracting uh it wasn't very immersive so i didn't like that part um and we looked around at a few other things i picked up some swag which i will talk about at the end of this video i'll show you what i got uh and generally we just had a really great time it was amazing i i, I was really happy with how things went uh and then four o'clock rolled around and I don't know the Cheers theme song. <laughs> this is our first day. Anybody done a headcount yet? No. 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 Right. Oh, yeah, Sound off. Oh. <laughs> Becky's here. Hey. Becky. Hey. Um, 
And so, and then I think we're gonna, this year, I think we'll head to Cafe Ole tonight. Uh, usually we do that on our last night, but I'm really craving Mexican. And I, <laughs> and I wasn't really sure where to cut that because he talked a lot about a bunch of different things. So I just cut it uh, right there. Um, so then, yeah, we, uh, we went to a place called Cafe Ole. Uh, and we had some delicious Mexican food, and I sat at a table with some really awesome turbos. We decided we were the cool runnings table, because we were just that cool. <laughs> and, uh, my brother took a video of that, and I'm just gonna throw that in right here. So, a couple of things to close. And then we we did sort of a pub crawl. Uh, I didn't drink because of my liver, but uh, you know we we stopped off at a CVS and I picked up a soda and a candy bar and and you know we just sort of you know shot the shit. And uh, my brother got a bit of that, and I'll slide that in right here. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. I can graduate on the field. Yeah. Like, was actually, Change the, I, or the name Metal the Punk and like, I'm in. I mean, oh, yeah. Yeah. And if you didn't catch that, that was Becky talking about showing me around Japan. When I said that my brother wants to take me to Japan this year, Becky talked about the fact that she and Fraser are moving to Japan. They have fallen in love with that country and they want to live there. And there, and she said, okay, if you're coming to Japan, wait until after June 18th, which is when we move, and then we will show you around Tokyo. And I couldn't believe it. Video Games Awesome Live, Fraser and Becky want to show me around Japan. And Fraser himself was talking about how, oh, you know, there's so many places that we can go. Becky, in that video, she was talking about all these places to get really good chicken. Uh, and I was just kind of flabbergasted. And it was just so amazing that, uh, that that was a possibility, that that's something that really is probably, possibly going to happen in my future, in the near future, this year. Oh, my God. And then we sat on a very cold balcony, even though there was, like, these fire towers all around us. Uh, just talking, and I got so much time talking to Fraser and Becky. It was crazy. And a cat, and our white cat, he is a little shithead. Like he, he, he goes after Hugo and just punishes Hugo. Like Hugo, he'll chase him into the earth and swat him and fight him. And like he knows he's the most intelligent cat we have, though. Because like I met all these really cool turbos that I really want to, you know, continue to get to know and and develop those friendships because they were just awesome people. I mean, one thing that I said to Fraser and Becky about the fandom is that they really inspire their fans to put their best foot forward. It's something that's already inside of each of them, but there's something about Fraser and Becky that just m makes us want to be that version of ourselves, that be the person that we portray to others. I was just so excited to meet everybody, and it was just such a fantastic time. But it, at the end of the night, it was time for us to go because we could only really afford to be there for Friday because we flew in Thursday and we had to fly out Saturday morning. And so we did a bittersweet farewell. <laughs> yeah, we're recording. Ooh.
Okay, so, uh, all right, so that's it for uh, the weekend. We're already on our way back. Uh, I meant to record earlier, but we were just dog tired. We got up at 6 a.m. Uh, I had to be at the airport so that my brother could leave by 7.30, and then we left at 8, and we're in Chicago. And so this is the last leg of our journey, and we're heading home. Uh, it was an amazing weekend with Fresh and Becky and the Turbos, and it was so cool meeting everybody. And uh, we, just, we just had a great time, and I cannot wait to do this again. Uh, I definitely plan, if, if possible, I'm going to do this again. And I, I, I feel like I may have like started some really good friendships just by being there. I met them for the first time, uh, other than seeing them obviously on YouTube. Uh, amazing, they were really nice people. I had fun, I enjoyed the con. Uh, I got to see some pretty cool stuff. I should have done the VR stuff. I know you guys were doing VR stuff. Oh, the VR, the VR stuff was amazing. I, I didn't, you know, I was busy yeah. buying things and being stupid and wasting Oh, we got so much sweat. Like, oh, my God. But, yeah, it was great. Uh, yeah. You know, too bad you missed uh, the person cosplaying a senior. It was amazing. Oh, I'll look, but, up, uh, I'll look up photos. I'm sure someone will post photos. Exactly. But some of the some of the turbos actually had some pretty cool costumes, too. So. Yeah. Oh, man. And uh, Just... they, they, Fraser, well, Becky forced me to dance, technically. She yeah. threatened me. <laughs> and then she threatened to kick my ass and then attempted to kick my ass. Really quick, the lightning story was that uh, coming into uh, San Antonio, uh, we came through a storm. And um, it was really scary. And it was like I was white knuckle gripping armrests. And, um, and Matt happened to look out the window. And he was all like, oh, I shouldn't have looked outside. And I very purposefully did not ask him why. And then we land, and I'm like, okay, so what was the deal? He was like, yeah, I saw a lightning strike outside. And I'm like, oh my god. And, and I told her that story, and she's like, oh my god, I will kick his ass. And she won, because I'm not gonna, yeah, I'm yeah. not taking Becky down, that's for sure. No, you're not. <laughs> no one's taking Becky down. So, okay. but no, it was real fun, it was real good. Uh, had a good time. The food at the Mexican you know, place was fantastic. That was good. Uh, and I got to try a Mexican soda for the first time, and it was really good. Yeah, they have those up near us, though. Don't rob me of this experience, no, sir. No, it was good, it was good. It was really good. But you should get more now that the now that Yes, I, now that I know that they exist, and that they are in where we live, I will get some. And try tamarind delivery. Do you like tamarind? You two at home. Try yeah. Tamarind now. Yes. You two. Official plug. No, not, yeah. not an official plug. We're, we're not being good. Okay. All right, that's it. Uh, so, yeah, I will edit all this together when I get home, and I will post it. So, see you next time. Peace. And then we flew back, and that's when everything seemed to go wrong, where the entire weekend had been fantastic. The return, not so much. All right, so uh, we're back home. The last leg of the journey went fine, but uh, then we went back to my car, and it started up just great. And then we got a couple of miles down the road, and the battery light turned on, and the check engine light turned on, and the steering got real hard to turn. Managed to pull off into a gas station, got a tow truck to come. He said it's a serpentine belt, and it's either broken or just slipped off. But anyway, it will not get fixed until Monday. So that's fun, which means that Matt's stuck here tonight. He was supposed to go home. He had plans, and now yep. he does not. Thank you, Daniel. That's it's not my fucking fault. I'm joking. You joking, prick? I'm joking. You you uh -huh. all weekend this. Yeah. Uh huh. Me. Me. All me. Yeah. All, all you. Me. All you. All weekend. <sighs> I I did that too. The drip coming out here. Yeah, oh. I did that too. Yeah. So, uh, also came home to this. Yeah, how about that? Yeah, how about that? Service people are uh, were earlier here to upstairs to fix it, uh, to stop it dripping into my apartment, and yeah. So, we'll see how that goes. Anyway, uh, so the tow truck driver drove my car to Midas, uh, and it will be there um, until Monday morning, uh, which is the earliest uh, they will be able to fix it. And this guy's stuck here, and uh, fucked. And I have to work tomorrow, so he's stuck here all day long, all by himself. Hooray! Isn't that great? At least I bought food. Huh? At least I bought food. At least you bought food. All things considered, it was worth it. I mean, even coming back to ice and snow and a car that broke down and all this 
shit that happened, it was worth it. And a new temporary roommate. And a new temporary roommate who better fucking pay me some goddamn rent. Huh, huh, yeah. No. <laughs> All right, that's it for now. Peace. And then Monday morning rolled around and they fixed the car and it cost me $400. The problem was more than just the serpentine belt, it was the pulleys that it wraps around and those had to all be replaced. And so, yeah, that's great. Uh, they also discovered that there's something wrong with the gearbox and he said that that would probably need to be replaced in the near future. And that would cost about $500. So all told, I have decided that I'm putting way too much money into this vehicle that only cost me two grand in the first place. So I am going to get a new car. More on that later. But enough about the negative, back to the positive. I got swag. Good stuff, actually. I don't have all of it with me right now. Uh, I think I uh, accidentally left it at work. I have a portal bag, uh, which I think was in uh, the video with me and Becky. Uh, a pair of leather gauntlets, which also uh, you may have seen in the, uh, uh, in the video. They're really cool, uh, and they weren't that expensive. Uh, there was this really nice leather trench coat, very cool brown, sort of, sort of steampunk, sort of Assassin's Creed. Uh, I really wanted it, and uh, it fit real nice, and then I was like, yeah, okay, I'm totally getting this. How much is it? $600. So, <laughs> I was like, nope. I also got a couple of rings that I think are really cool. Uh, this one that uh, you may have seen in the video. Uh, it is a D20 ring. Oh my god, it spins! <laughs> I also have this one. Uh, it is a hit point ring. And the numbers turn and you can count your hit points with it. So I can have like up to 99 hit points. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's something to use for playing tabletop games or really counting anything that there are up to 99 of. With the portal bag, I got this, uh, a companion cube necklace, which I think is really cool. It's a real good thing that I didn't go too crazy with the money over the weekend, otherwise I would definitely have not been able to afford the repairs that I definitely needed in order to get my car running again and to get Matt home, which I did do. Uh, but like I said in the video, all told, it really was worth it. I really do feel like having to put up with a, a few minor inconveniences it really doesn't matter because i i got i got to check something off my bucket list the video games awesome live in person done so that's it that was my weekend and i'm sorry it took so long to edit this all together but i've just been very very busy obviously with car stuff and everything else and work and i know i keep saying this but it just it really was an amazing time and i'm just so happy to have done it so all right, folks, uh, I will update again soon. See you next time.